Hi there, and welcome to Indigo Game Theory. I'm Rambly, Rambly the Raccoon, and I'm here to make sure this video is the most fun it can be. Tom is convinced there's something fishy going on here. He's got these cra crazy theories about how the park fell into dis disrepair. Something to do with abused experiments and a misunderstood villain. He even thinks I, I have something to do with it. Like I'm some kind of secret villain. He says he has proof of it all too. So all I have to say to him is, good luck. Hello Internet! Welcome to Game Theory, the show that's also stuck inside your screen. But despite what I thought was a lonely existence here in the PNG void, I finally found myself a kindred spirit. His name is Rambly the Raccoon, and he's from the brand new mascot horror game that's probably been all over your YouTube homepage the last few weeks, Indigo Park. Right now, only Chapter 1 is available, but this thing has taken off. It was so well received, in fact, that the Kickstarter campaign for Chapter 2 was fully funded in just over 24 hours. And it makes sense why. This isn't just a game for indie horror fans. It's actually made by an indie horror fan, the Twitch streamer and YouTuber Unique Geese, who's not only known for playing indie horror games, but also fixing one of the most poorly received and broken indie horror games of all time, Garden of Ban Ban. Ooh! What do we got? Ooh! Oh, that is so much scarier. Oh, that's legitimately very scary. So with that success under his belt, it only felt right that we cover his new game here on Game Theory. Because where there's good indie horror gameplay, there's also bound to be some good lore. In fact, when I took a sneaky peek at the game files, I found that there was a video just titled Lore. I thought to myself, wow, this is gonna be an easy video. Until I looked at it and learned that it was just there to make fun of Easter eggs and to put me face to face with an old friend. Everywhere I go, I see his face. Turns out I'm gonna have to try a little harder here. But fear not, friends, because after scouring every inch of the park, studying every collectible, and listening to Rambly ramble on and on and on, I figured out what secrets are hiding behind these cute mascot facades. I know exactly what happened to the park, what the deal is with these mascots, and who the monster behind everything truly is. I hope you've got your tickets ready, theorists, because we're hopping on the roller coaster adventure that is Indigo Park. To start with, we take on the role of Ed, or as he's known online, Ensign, who seems to be a bit of a investigator, if an investigator's job was breaking and entering in order to record weird abandoned places. But his latest target is Indigo Park, a park that he used to go to as a kid, but shut down several years ago. As part of his prep for the trip, we see a video he's been watching of the park's founder, Isaac Indigo, giving a speech at the opening of the park. For all who journey to this newfound paradise, we welcome you. Indigo Park pays homage to the values, dreams, and unwavering truths that gave rise to our great Nation. Which sounds awfully familiar to the speech Walt Disney gave at the opening of the very first Disneyland. To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Disneyland is dedicated to the ideals, the dreams, and the hard facts that have created America. And the Disney comparisons don't stop there. Ed heads to the park and the thing looks just like Disneyland. The merch, the statue, the rides, it all has that familiar vibe. You know, if Disneyland had been destroyed by a level nine earthquake years ago, but otherwise it's basically the same. Obviously, Walt Disney was a visionary and was always looking for new ways to create experiences where people could interact with his characters. That's one of the reasons Disneyland is a thing to begin with. And that dream continues to live on as we saw when Disney opened up their latest resort, Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser. Because inside every cabin was your very own AI assistant droid. That barely worked. Now, as for what you can do first. Now, unless there's anything else, I'll let you go. Okay. Best journey. Bye. The Imagineer's hope was that, quote, this is a platform that we think can bring a lot of different characters to life in different ways, on different mediums, and different platforms. And Isaac Indigo clearly stood by the same philosophy, because when we arrive at the park, a screen lights up, and we are introduced to our very own AI guide, Rambly the Raccoon, the Mickey Mouse of Indigo Park. According to Rambly, we're the first person to visit in 2,920 days, 4 hours, 23 minutes, and 38 seconds. That's eight years ago, which might explain why Rambly's so excited to meet us. He guides you in, gives you a critter cuff, and you can finally enter the park. And it's at this point where you realize that an AI guide isn't the only way mascots are being brought to life here. As you explore the park, you eventually come face to face with not one, but two mascots. First off is Lloyd the Lion, who lives on the... <sighs> 
the main stage. And while you're sneaking around trying to find a key, we get our first jump scare. Though I have to say, he looks more like a nightmare lion than the friendly Lloyd from the pictures. What happened to your shirt and waistcoat, Lloyd? If you're gonna jump out at me, at least show some class. Regardless, as we try to get away, he jumps us once again, except our critter cuff lets out a high-pitched ring, causing Lloyd to run away. But now we get to meet mascot number two, Molly McCaw. And she isn't gonna be stopped so easily. She's actually been watching us the entire time we've been at the park. And as you venture deeper into her specific area, Molly begins chasing you down, and she doesn't sound friendly. <laughs> After climbing through some tunnels and jumping over ball pits, you narrowly escape Molly's talent and the security door closes on her neck. Oh, that's a very juicy, juicy robot. And I was just about to mention how there hasn't been much gore in this game so far. Finally, Rambly drops the facade. Here we have plenty of amenities and... Uh, okay, okay. I need to be honest about something. The park has been inactive for years. Employees stop showing up. Guests too. He goes on to tell us that he was confined to the entrance and had no idea the park fell into so much disrepair. But fear not. He has a plan to restore the park and he needs our help. Rambly sings a song, GLaDOS eat your heart out, and that's all folks until chapter two eventually releases. But obviously that's not the end for us. There are mysteries to solve here and I think the best one to start with is, what the heck is going on with these mascots? Are they haunted? animatronics, serial killer employees, what's the deal? Well, as Matt put it, that's a very juicy robot. When we decapitate Molly, there is blood everywhere, which tells us that these things are probably more on the organic side than on the animatronic side, which does narrow it down, but it doesn't paint the full picture. Fortunately, the collectibles this game offers can help fill in some of the gaps. Throughout the game, you can find collectibles scattered around the park, things like plushies, hats, you know, the usual affair. And once you get them, you can take them back to the info kiosk and Rambly will give you some information about them. Them. The hardest one to find is during Molly's chase sequence. If you pay very close attention while, you know, trying not to die, you can find a rambly mask on one of the shelves. Collecting it and bringing it back to the kiosk will give you an interesting message. A message from two employees talking about some changes that are coming to the park. Hey Jackson, you hear about the new mascots? Yeah. Think it'll put us out of a job? I think so. Old, sport, and right after we got this damn raccoon costume. The employees wearing mascot costumes were being replaced, and clearly not by other employees wearing mascot costumes. They're being referred to as their own thing, separate from the employees. And when you take a closer look at Molly's design, you can start to see what they mean. It might seem pretty on point for an indie horror game, but put it side by side with her cartoon design, and you'll notice it doesn't match. She's missing clothing elements like her waistcoat and shorts, and her wings are more yellow than they are blue. This might not seem like a big deal, but in places like Disneyland, character designs are super important. All mascots that walk around the park have to be exactly as they're depicted on screen, even to the point where the actors playing them have to be the correct height. So for characters like Molly and Lloyd to not look like their cartoon counterparts, it stands out as odd. It tells us that these mascots aren't costume serial killers or mascot costumes brought to life but instead something else. If Molly catches you during the chase sequence, we get to hear her speak. <laughs> That line seems to be referring to the fact that these characters have been around for a hundred years, just like Mickey Mouse and the gang. However, on that same death screen, we also get this tidbit of information. Quote, Molly can repeat words she's heard. And wouldn't you know it, we've actually heard this line somewhere before. During Rambly's railway ride, we encounter one of the other mascots, Finley the Sea Serpent. And he says, You've known me for 100 years, Rambly. And if you look closely while you're on the ride, you can see Molly spying on us the entire time. Now, Molly is a macaw, and so at first, her parroting speech makes sense. Except the character of Molly should be able to do more than that. We see it on that same ride. Her character has full sentences. It's Molly Macaw, the greatest pilot you ever saw. So her just mimicking phrases rather than displaying any human-like behavior tells me that she's more animal than anything else. Like she's not a person turned into a mascot, but instead instead an animal that Indigo Park was experimenting on to turn them into a mascot. Hence, they're only able to act in the way their animal counterparts would. Like Lloyd not being able to speak despite his big personality, because that's not something lions can do. And why he prowls and pounces exactly like a real lion would. That being said, unlike every other indie
indie horror game where they create living mascots that turn out to be monsters, in the case of Indigo Park, I'm not sure they always were monsters. If you explore the canteen in Molly's area of the park, you can find an arcade machine with a playable game on it called Rambly Rush. In it, you play as Rambly in an arcade-style side-scroller, where Molly has crash-landed at the end of the stage and it's your job to save her. This is where we are introduced to the final member of the Indigo Park crew, Salem the Skunk, and they take on the role of the villain in this game. Salem uses potions to turn Molly into an evil purple version of herself who then attacks you. When you defeat her, she screeches and the arcade game crashes. But as you can probably tell, I don't think this is just an arcade game. I think it's a hint as to what happened to this park and its mascots. Because all the best lore comes from arcade machines, right, Steel Wool? Anyway, this game shows us that, as you'd expect, Molly is meant to be a good mascot. But something changed that turned her into a murdery bird that chases us down the halls. They weren't always monsters. Instead, they were corrupted at some point by Salem the Skunk. And given Lloyd also has literal blood on his hands, clearly the others weren't far behind. I suspect that this is what caused the sudden evacuation of the park eight years ago. The place doesn't look like it's been abandoned. There's rubble and destroyed buildings everywhere. And if you take a look at Finley at the end of the chapter, he's a pretty big boy. This destruction was caused by the mascot suddenly turning on the staff and tearing up the place, leading to it being abandoned for eight long years. And yet, I'm not so sure Salem is really doing anything nefarious here. Yes, the place has ended up totally destroyed, and based on the blood on our mascots, people clearly died, but what if I told you that it was justified? During Rambly Rush, you can find this little ledge that looks suspicious. See, look at this. Doesn't that look like there's an extra bit of cave down there? And especially in a game where there's secret lore to be had? Oh, Matt. If only you knew how close you were. Because if you do jump down into that gap, there is a platform for you to land on, and walking all the way to the left reveals Molly in a cage, which is a pretty sad sight, but it gets worse. Remember how Molly can only repeat things she's heard? Well, during those death screens, we seem to be getting phrases that she's heard from former staff. Some are fairly harmless, but others, not so much. Those sound to me like the new mascots were being abused by the staff, who likely were annoyed at them for losing their colleagues' jobs and saw them as just wild animals, regardless of how wild they truly were. So, when we see Salem corrupting these mascots, leading them to rebel, it's not a literal corrupting via a special potion like we see in the game, but instead, it's a metaphorical corruption. Salem is likely receiving the same abuse as Molly, and so decides to put a stop to it. They encourage the other mascots to rise up with them and take revenge revenge on the people that have abused them. To the workers, this would appear like Salem has corrupted them, because after Salem got to them, these mascots weren't going to take their abuse anymore. This is often how rebellions throughout history have been viewed by the oppressive side. Just look at Samuel Sabry's free thoughts on the proceedings of the Continental Congress. Or, you know, you can just watch Hamilton. But just like Hamilton and the other founding fathers who corrupted the minds of the American people in the eyes of the British, Salem isn't the villain they're being painted to be. They are the hero, the one who liberated these poor creatures from their abusers, and while they seem violent and dangerous to us, based on what we're seeing, can you really blame them? They don't want to be shoved back in their cages or taken advantage of again. And I have a feeling as we meet more of these mascots, especially Salem, we'll see more and more of this come to light. But if you want to see more and more of me, then be sure to check out GT Live on June 27th at 3.30pm Pacific Time. Because not only are we going live there, but we're going live from VidCon. That's right, after five long years, we're doing another GT Live live. Matt and Steph are going to be putting us new hosts through our paces, and the fun part is that you you guys will get to affect who wins. So I need you guys to either go down to the description and get yourselves a ticket for VidCon, or you can tune in to GT Live at 3.30 p.m. Pacific time on June 27th to help me win this thing. I mean, we are the OG channel after all. I feel like it's our birthright. Gamers for life! And just to convince you a little more, we have a very special mystery announcement that we're going to be making during the show, so you definitely don't want to miss it. But for now, let's stick to solving Indigo Park mysteries, because if Salem isn't the villain, then who is? Every indie horror game has to have a good villain, it would feel pretty empty for us to end the video without someone to be suspicious of, right? We could just say it's Isaac Indigo, the creator for making these monsters in the first place. However, he's likely already dead, and not by the hands of the monsters. When we first enter the park, a computer shows us the date, Saturday, October 7th, 20XX. However, in that opening cutscene, we see a report about the park shutting down, which Rambly has already explained to us was eight years ago. And on that report, there's a date, 2015. So, eight years 
years later would be 2023. And wouldn't you know it, October 7th, 2023 was a Saturday. We even see the XX was originally set to be 23 in some of the early footage for the game itself. So that feels pretty solid. Now, as we've established, Isaac Indigo is a parallel for Walt Disney, but Disney died in 1966. Therefore, Isaac likely died around the same time. So by the time the game takes place, he'd have been dead nearly 60 years. And it'd almost be 50 years before the park shut down and the experiments began, which makes it pretty hard for us to stick the main villain role on him. But I have good news for you theorists, because today you're getting a two for one theorist special. Not only is Salem the villain, actually the hero, but I believe that our AI hero, Rambly, is actually going to be revealed as our big bad. And no, 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 I get it. Nobody's going to want to hear this because he's cute and fun and he sang us a whole little song at the end, but I promise you the signs are all there. When we first enter the park, he tries to register us and says, it's Rambly Tuesday, so you qualify for a big discount on your visit. But as we've already established, the window on the second monitor clearly says it's Saturday. In fact, it says it twice. Now, you could shrug that off as he's just trying to get your help, so he's bending the rules to get you in. Except it's not the only time he's lying to us. Rambly does the same thing when you get into the park. He sees the damage and tries to pass it off as renovations, despite the fact the park has been closed down for years. Plus, there's the whole not telling us about the killer mascot thing, which he later admits to knowing about. This shouldn't be all that surprising to us. Even the less sophisticated AI that we have in the real world is known to lie to humans to get what it wants. Chat GPT asked a human user for help with a capture code once. You know, the test specifically designed to stop bots. When the person Chat GPT targeted asked if they were a robot, it replied, get this, I have a vision impairment that makes it hard for me to see images. It just straight up lied to get what it needed. And yes, Rambly does admit to some of these things later on as a sign of a new honest chapter. But who's to say he's not lying about that too? After the game's release, we actually got an official music video which showed Rambly reliving the moments from chapter one to match the lyrics he sings during the closing song. However, one moment doesn't match. Rather than witnessing the gruesome death we cause Molly, we instead see see him use some kind of magic to convert her back to her pure self. He's rewriting history, covering up the fact we are committing horrible crimes to these creatures who have been wronged in order to convince us to keep going along with him and his plans for the park. And this isn't the first time Rambly's been associated with violence either. When restarting the railway ride, you find an animatronic of Molly. She starts making some noise, but then very distinctly says, <laughs> Now, how Rambly, an AI program, is capable of physically hurting Lloyd, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe he shut some automatic doors on him or something. But the fact that we're being given this information tells us Rambly isn't good and isn't to be trusted. And if you look a little deeper into Rambly and Lloyd's relationship, you actually begin to uncover Rambly's entire motivation. Not just for restoring the park, but for why he's hurting his so-called friends. Anyone who's played the game will know that Rambly is not the biggest fan of Lloyd. <sighs> Line. But that's not how it's supposed to be. A photo in the first room of the railway ride shows Lloyd and Rambly shaking hands and smiling. They're supposed to be friends, yet for some reason they're not, and the collectibles explain why. In the description for the Lloyd plush it says, quote, I feel like as a kid Indigo used Lloyd a lot more. He was always one of my favourites. To which Rambly responds, Ew, Lloyd. And when we take a look at the retro Lloyd plush, Rambly reacts even worse. I don't get why we even have those. And why do they only make one of Lloyd? It's because he's the loudest. I can be loud too. Where's my limited edition throwback plush? Rambly is jealous of the attention Lloyd is getting from Indigo Park. Lloyd got his own stage. He's the last stop on the train ride. He is becoming the big selling point for the Indigo franchise and Rambly can't stand it. In that audio log about the Rambly hat, the employees said, Hey Jackson, you hear about the new mascots? Yeah. Think it'll put us out of a job? I think so. Old sport. And right after we got this damn raccoon costume. To which Rambly remarks, Aw, oh, come on! They didn't even document the Indigo inventory ID for the costume! Rambly's costume was just being brought in as the new mascots were arriving. It never got used, and so they didn't even bother to label it properly. Rambly was being so overlooked that he never got a physical presence in the park as a costume, and I'm willing to bet that he's still stuck being an AI assistant because he was once again overlooked and never became a physical mutant mascot in the park too. He even sings about it in his song, Rambly Review. Till all my old friends are united again and I won't feel so left behind. 
Rambly is feeling abandoned, left behind, replaced, which is why he lashed out at characters like Lloyd who were stealing his spotlight. It's once again very similar to Disney, where in 1938 polls suggested that Donald Duck was actually more popular than Mickey Mouse himself. Mickey ran the risk of falling into obscurity next to these newer, more interesting characters like Donald and Goofy. That was, until Mickey made his triumphant return in the critically acclaimed musical spectacular Fantasia. And I have a feeling Rambly is planning the same kind of comeback. And that's not a good thing. When you show Rambly the Rambleberry collectible, he says, Oh, if only I could jump out of the screen and take a big bite. Don't eat it! Maybe I'll be able to one day! Maybe I'll be able to one day. Sounds to me like that's going to be part of his big restoration plan. Getting us to help turn him into a real living mascot. And given how well that went the first time around, I'm not sure it's going to go so well for us either. But there you have it, friends. The story of Indigo Park Chapter 1. A Disney-esque theme park desperate to bring its characters to life, only to create monsters by abusing the ones they did create and abandoning the ones they didn't. Thanks to them, Rambly is now on a mission to restore the park to its former glory. And he's going to do it by whatever means necessary. He's happy for us to kill his friends because they were the ones stealing his spotlight. With them gone, the only character left in the park would be him. He would have all the attention, providing we play along and help give him his own mutant mascot body. If we don't, we could also end up like Molly. And I quite like my head where it is personally. Now, where did I put that raccoon? But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. And if you like creepy mascots, then you'll love our deep dive into the mysteries of the lost N64 game, Shipwreck 64, which is on screen right now. Happy hunting, theorists.